fire, Howie. Fucking fire. Motherfucker! Stupid motherfucker! What an idiot! What an idiot! Here we go! Dallas has a more Cooper and Gallup, but we don't need a receiver! Are you kidding me? I don't want Justin Jefferson, he's an ass! Well, good Friday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's getting ready for the Christmas spirit here. We've got an amazing weekend that's on tap. We got three games, I'm sorry, two games tomorrow games all day sunday three games on christmas including the philadelphia eagles playing against the new york giants and i'm hoping i'm praying that we get a little extra mojo from our buddy rashid because we could definitely use an extra break now i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna go through from last night last night i don't know what was happening last night i was like literally it was like a snooze fest but you saw actually the los angeles rams who are now in a playoff position. The same Rams that we beat early in the season that, of course, doesn't count. Doesn't count that we're beating actually one of the teams that's actually in playoffs because at that time, they weren't winning. Be that as it may, I don't know that San Francisco's got that easy of a road to hoe to get that number one seed. They got Baltimore on Monday on Christmas, and they also have the Rams left. It is conceivable it is conceivable in this NFL year of change that we have seen so many teams that have risen and fallen from week to week. This year, more than any other year, has been a week to week league. Um, the Eagles, the question will be is will they finally pick themselves up on the mat? They have the easiest remaining schedule in the NFL. G uh, Giant fans, I hope you're listening on that and saying we're not going to make it easy. Now, this is what. Game time, Brian had said to me, now I'm kind of curious on this one. He said, we could lose the Miami Dolphin game as long as the Eagles lose one other game, we win the division. Now, I don't know how that works out. I know right now they're up to the fifth tiebreaker as far as um, how it's going to go. I know if we both went out, we lose the division, but I, I, don't, I don't know how it all works. I just don't know how it just don't know the big question is going to be is the health of both of these teams uh for dallas versus miami miami has a really tough road as well they have us they have buffalo and they have the ravens and so you have to look at the miami dolphins and saying that um there is no tomorrow for them they need this victory to give themselves a little bit more of a cushion going against buffalo bills um, if they lose out it's conceivable that they lose uh, don't make the playoffs. So you know they're going to be fighting tooth and nails. The question will be is, A, how will Tyron Smith, and a Tyron Smith, of course, um, popping up the injury report with a back that's flaring up, and that's not good news. And, of course, Zach Martin, who has the thigh bruise, and that's one of those things that it's sore and it takes away your strength as well. So we're kind of beat up. Now, Tariq Hill has thus far this, seat, this week has not practiced. Micah Parsons has kind of called him out and said that I'm faster than he is and trying to get this thing going on. Make no mistake about it. This game is huge for us. More, I mean, we're going to be in the playoffs regardless. The question will be is are we going to be the fifth seed or the second seed or possibly the one seed? Three weeks left or three games left, there's still a lot that can happen in those three weeks. The question is, can the Cowboys pick themselves up off the mat after the drubbing that they took from the Buffalo Bills? And can they find a way to get a win on the road? And this has been 
the biggest problem. If you get this win, then that hopefully cures some of the ills that you have. Now, people will look and say, well, look at Miami's record. They're 10 and 4. As they've killed the Cowboys and said that the Cowboys have not beaten any you know, winning teams. Well, you could definitely look and say the same thing about um, Miami. At least Seattle was 500 after we beat them. Um, you can look and say that the Denver Broncos team that we beat, of course, they beat them as well. Um, excuse me, not Denver. Excuse me, that Denver is the team that they beat that could be possibly a playoff team. So you could look at it from that standpoint and say there's one that they would have had. But that's the biggest win that they've had. I'd say us playing well against Philadelphia the first time and beating them the second time. I will say beating the Seahawks was actually pretty big. Um games for us so we'll see how it all works out um in the end now for a little bit more clarity we have actually we're gonna listen to get up this morning that has some of the scenarios for the playoffs let's take a listen to them how that bit him in the backside here we go let's go game of the night let's to make the playoffs and a little later in this program we will talk about how Matthew Stafford could be setting up what I think might be the most interesting postseason it may be the league has seen in a very long time in the meantime let us dive now into the Christmas Eve showdown which is a monster game between the Cowboys and the Dolphins and let's show you exactly what is at stake first off for Miami as we speak, they lead the Bills by two games in the AFC East. They have a matchup looming the last weekend of the season. And Miami has the toughest schedule remaining in the NFL. They've got the Cowboys, they have the Ravens, they have the Bills. Buffalo's next two opponents, meanwhile, have a combined record of 8-20. and 20. So because of this, there's a 62% chance the Bills and Dolphins play for the division Week 18. So Miami mm -hmm. needs this. Meanwhile, the Cowboys, they lead the NFC East for this moment. Mm -hmm. But the Eagles have the easiest remaining schedule in the entire yep. league, a 62% chance to win out. If both teams win out, the Eagles would most likely win the NFC East based on tiebreakers. So Dallas also desperately needs this win on the road. And here's Micah Parsons talking about his team's road mentality. They gotta it's a get mindset this. of how you approach it. I think, uh, you know, when you're at home, you're comfortable. You're, you know, you kind of do what you do. Um, but when you're in a road, you're in a new space, you're in a new area, you're in a new area, you're in just a new environment. And uh, the mindset is when the Lions, you know, Roman, does he take over the land or does he die? And last week, <laughs> we died. So we died. We got to take over some land this week. That's a fascinating way to put it. And I guess it does make some sense. All right, once and for all, I've spent all of this week, I didn't have you here Monday to help me. I'm fighting with Rex and Dan, and I had no voice of reason with me. What is this home road thing? Everyone is making such a big deal about the Cowboys on the road. I watched that game. That game could have been played on Jupiter. Yeah. And, and they would have had mm. the ball run down their throat. It's, How much of a difference is it making? I do, I, I do not think it's where they play. I believe it's how the other team plays. It's how the opponent mm -hmm. approaches the Dallas Cowboys. And what I mean by that is, is the Dallas Cowboys aren't going to fight back if you punch them in the mouth at your house or at their house. You can knock on their door, and if you're willing to bludgeon them at their front doorstep, you can do there that. You go. When you look at the Arizona Cardinals, the San Francisco 49ers, the Buffalo Bills, they all attack the this Dallas Cowboy defense, which loves to play sub packaging, which is add an extra defensive back by running the football. They all got their linemen headed downfield and very much like a mm -hmm. team that has not won a championship in 30 years, who people still buy all their jerseys and allow them to be the most profitable franchise oh, in the hater world. Time. They're front runners. And so the Dallas Cowboys have to understand that as Michael Parsons continues to say, we have to go take land. We have to go be a lion. Well, the thing <laughs> that the lion does when it's time to face the other lion from the other pack, yeah. we're trying to figure out who's going to be with the cubs, who's going to go let the women hunt all day so they can sleep all day <laughs> and eat the spoils, right? You got to go out and fight. And when this team wow. has to go out and fight, they have not done it. And so now we have to see what they can mm. do against the Miami Dolphins, but it doesn't matter where they play. Well, I'm thinking of you, Bart, as I'm watching yeah. that game, because you're always the guy who's going to be willing to stand there on the train tracks. I, I hear you say all yeah. that big, dumb, rough, tough yeah, linebacker there. stuff. Yeah. And I don't you call it dumb. No, no, big, tough. Oh, it's tough. <laughs> big, tough linebacker stuff. Right? Yeah, yeah. Who's going to stand there on the train track? <laughs> Look, one man's tough is another man's whatever. Okay. Yeah. But, but you know what I'm saying. Mm. And, and like they didn't, they didn't that isn't their strength. I'm not suggesting right. they're soft. That's not what they do well. So if the Dolphins start doing that same thing to them, can Dallas's defense hold up? 
I don't think so. And it's only one adjustment I think they can make. They have to realize or, or, or ask themselves, is Marquise Bell better mm-hmm. you know, at what he's doing? Or should we bring in maybe a backup DN and mm-hmm. put Michael Parsons back in the middle so we can't be out physical down here? Mm-hmm. Remember, Parkins comes from playing the inside one. linebacker. That's where he started from. Mm-hmm. He's very comfortable there. You understand that, you know, Dolphin running backs will bludgeon you to death. We saw it last week against the Jets. We understand that, remember, that whole San Francisco style of running, mm-hmm. you know, was, was de- de- devised by McDonald's. McDaniels. Yeah, he's, 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 a, run, he's a run yeah. specialist. Yeah. He's a, that's what he did for yeah. San Francisco. So he's going to find ways to be able to exploit, you know, Marquise Bell, who's a lighter guy. You know, and you can't hide him. You can't hide linebackers, right? You can't hide away from physicality. So you have to consider maybe taking him off the field, bringing the extra D in, and using Lawrence as the, you know, to the strong side of the defense, knowing they're going to run open and put Michael Parsons sideline to sideline. Yeah, very, he come down help here. me with one thing quickly Michael here. Michael Parsons though, hasn't been great. I mean, he's Dan been Orlovsky good. What Dan was explaining yesterday, yeah. we'll get the guys in, is like the, the, they'll, they'll kill you then with those like screen passes. They'll throw them out to the side to Tyree Kill and Jalen no, Waddle no. and all of that. Like They're going to beat you with – Miami can beat you with their speed too. Yes, they can, but if you're going to – but to do that, you got to try and stop them with a light box. You right. might rather have a real inside linebacker that's 240 pounds that can go sideline to sideline. Yeah. When Michael Parsons is on one side, you can get away from them and take him out of the game by running away from him. You see, the best way to help the Dallas Cowboy defense is Dak Prescott. Last week, Josh Allen completed seven passes. Mm-hmm. They scored 30 points. So what they have to do is if Dallas can score and make Miami throw the ball part of the time, that allowed Dallas to do what they do best, which is rush the passer. Mm-hmm. Darcy's point, beyond that, it's all physics. They are so light between Marquise Bell, Damone Clark, that – Yep, Miami, even with backup offense linemen, will be able to run the ball. The other thing, as Hembo remind me, will is they? two is second in the league in completions for screens and yard screens to what you're alluding to, Greeny. That's what they want to do. Those are long handoffs. The way you get Miami out of their comfort zone is you have to move the ball in offense. And if Dak Prescott, even if they have a B game, that's going to allow Dallas to do what they do best, which is rush the passer. Yeah, it's interesting. There's a couple, there's a couple injury issues, right? Jonathan Hankins, the big D tackle, mm-hmm. missed last week's game. Doesn't look like he's going to play in this one. That's a big factor in their run defense, that's huge. obviously. Tyron Smith, the left tackle, hasn't practiced yet this week. I, I would, I'd feel if I were Dallas, I'd practiced. be more comfortable if I saw him on the practice field today. I find what Bart's saying fascinating. People forget about Micah Parsons that he was drafted as a linebacker, right? He's, be, he's been linebacker. such a dominant edge rusher. Do, do they risk taking him out of that position because he can absolutely play that? He can Silent absolutely do what you need him to do to help you uh, aug- or augment your run defense in the absence of your, your defensive tackle mm-hmm. depth. So I'm interested to see what Dan Quinn does because it's got to be different than what it was last week. And, and then the other piece of it to, to what Mike T is saying. For the Cowboys, it would be awfully nice to play from in front instead of behind. Last week, it, it, everything got away from them so yeah, quickly right, yeah. in that game. It didn't feel like they were being dominated, but they were losing, like, I think it was 14 yeah. nothing or 10 nothing before you could even it, it open your eyes. So side. how do they do that? How does Dak well, play I, 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 think, I, think the, do. I think the first thing was it wasn't about Dak and to why they were trailing. It was because they couldn't stop the run. It was because right. they couldn't get – couldn't get on the field. field. And if you look at the Miami Dolphins, they're second in first down efficiency to the San Francisco 49ers. And Michael Parsons can't rush if you don't put him right. in positions to rush. And the Buffalo Bills never allowed them to get there. And offensively, I think sometimes you become so that dependent because yeah. he was playing extremely well. Well, you have to understand, you have to answer that physicality with physicality. The Buffalo Bills were driving people, were driving linebackers, driving deep yeah. tackles all the way to the safety yep. position. You don't think that gets an offensive line fired up? Mm-hmm. And then now on the other side, you're backpedaling, trying to protect Dak Prescott. And so Mike McCarthy is going. In other words, look, we can end it right there. Basically, what they're saying is ball control. You need to control the football, and you need to control the line of scrimmage. That's the bottom line. In that game, we did not control the line of scrimmage. The Buffalo, excuse me, yeah, the Buffalo Bills, they beat us to the punch on both sides. They were able to run the football, and we were not able to get the ball back and be able to control their defensive front. Dak Prescott was under distress all day. We, we ran the ball, but it, you were so far behind that you didn't have the chance. They basically played our game against us. Now, we need to have a better, a much better performance from our defensive line, without a doubt. We need to go ahead and get to, to them. Now, they're going to have a lot of injured offensive linemen that aren't going to be playing or the ones that are going to play are coming off injuries just like us, like every team is right now in the NFL. 
the rotation of defensive linemen that we have, we need guys to step up. These guys should be relatively fresh and ready to go, and they're going to need to show up and show off. So that's what we got this morning. We will, of course, be live streaming tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern. And in the meantime, I'm going to get some work done here at the Red Brick House. As always, here we go.